Hello, Teen Creeps listeners. This is producer Brett. And before we get to today's episode on Silent Night, I just wanted to take a quick second to apologize for last week's episode mix up. On behalf of everyone here at Forever Dog, we are very sorry that we deprived you of a Teen Creeps Christmas episode on Christmas week. How could we? And if it sounds like Kelly and Lindsay are holding a gun to my head right now, I can assure you they are not. I asked them if I could do this intro because in addition to groveling for mercy, I also wanted to sincerely say how amazing it has been getting to know the Teen Creeps community this past year. You are truly one of the most imaginative, hilarious, and supportive fan bases in all of podcasting. And it is an honor to play a small part in bringing you this show week after week. Oh, and for today's episode, which was supposed to be last week's episode, we decided not to edit Kelly and Lindsay's outro because they have some really funny and sweet messages for you. But just to be clear on the dates, the episode on Arl Stein's Lights Out will be coming out next Wednesday, January 9th. The Forever Dog Best of episode came out last Wednesday, December 26th. Check that out if you haven't already. And stay tuned for more Teen Creeps fun and surprises in the new year. Okay, on with the show. Forever Dog. Happy Holidays, you're dead. This week on the podcast, R.L. Stein's Silent Night. Welcome to Teen Creeps, the podcast that discusses YA Pulp Fiction. I'm one of your hosts, Lindsay K. Tai. I'm another one of your hosts, Kelly Nugent. I forgot that that <laughs> we had talked about that being the tagline for Silent Night. Yeah. Uh, and was very excited when you said that just now. It's maybe the funniest tagline. It's a terrible tagline. It's insane. It's so bad. Happy Holidays, it makes you're dead. no sense. And that never gets said. Never. Like, the messages to Reva are never even threatening no they're like from a friend <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay weird weird present which here's the thing i've been so excited to do this story mm-hmm. this story this book for a long time mm-hmm. it's insane there's so much going on in this book um i didn't know it was gonna be like multiple plot lines no, there's like a plot b plot c, c plot, plot d plot like yeah there is d plot. Alphabet like plots. the dad has his own plot going on where like he's oh, got yeah. so much to deal with with the store like oh yeah they're having electrical problems mm-hmm. he just had to let their drunken night um or the uh, security security head of security go yeah head of security go they have multiple stores yeah like he is in such a state. Okay, so do you want me to read the back of the book? Yes. <laughs> Don't open that present. If only Reva Dalby had listened to that warning. Wait, but what? Beautiful cold Reva won't listen to anyone. <laughs> Reva thinks she can have whatever and whoever she wants. After all, her daddy owns Dalby department stores. Now someone has surprises in store for her. Robbery, terror, even murder. Terror? Terror, even Murder? Murder? Someone wants to treat Reba to a holiday she'll never forget. Holiday cheer quickly turns to holiday chills for Reba. I thought I was going to say holiday fear. Fear. I know. Are you fucking kidding me with not saying fear just then? It's fear street. Yeah. And it rhymes. Holiday cheer street quickly turns to (laughs) holiday fear street for Reba. I would even accept that more. It would be hilarious if that said that. For it not to have said cheer or fear. Someone's stalking her. Someone's trying to get to her. Her money can't help her. No one can. After all, who can you turn to when murder comes gift wrapped? <laughs> gift wrapped. It comes gift wrapped. I guess it does um, one time. Nobody warned her not to open the no, present. Nobody said that. Nobody is gave a, a shit. Outright lie. Um, I am incensed. I think we have another entry into our cunt scale. Yeah. With Reva. Yeah. Also, she, she like kind of doesn't get better she barely for a page she does but it's unearned she gets better and i'm like but why are you better yeah just all of a sudden you're like realized like all hank does is go (laughs) you have no friends no one likes you you're mean to everyone and she goes i guess i have been pretty cold ever since my mother mother died died. (laughs) oh my god and then she's like fine she's like i never even cried and i'm not gonna cry now Nor will I have heard the whole book. Yeah, the entire book. But I know I should have. Also, like, she keeps doing the whole, like, she she says multiple times in the book, like, ever since mother died. Like, she's very, like, I... Yeah. The only one she's not mean to is her little brother, Michael, her six-year-old brother, Michael. 
Michael. Michael. Michael. Um, yeah. Bare bones summary. Reva's a huge bitch. Her mm-hmm. dad owns the mall. <laughs> and he's like, you get to work there. And she's like, ew. And then she's like, I'm going to play tricks on people by like telling them they have jobs. But like, really, they have other jobs. <laughs> and then someone's like sending her scary things. Mm hmm. And but like at work, at work, not at her at place her of home, work. at her place of work, and they're all gift wrapped. And then, uh oh, one of them is a corpse. Yeah, and it's Mitch, this guy that like works there. One of the guys she played a joke on. No, yeah. she wasn't playing a joke on him. She was just trying to steal him away from his girlfriend. And then like decided that he was too wimpy and was like, mm, "Your no. nose." <laughs> so here are the jokes. Or you finish. Sorry. Oh, uh, someone. Kill, someone kills, kills someone Mitch. Kill, kills mitch it's in this big box and she's like ah the, <laughs> the, the stakes are higher <laughs> oh they've been heightened <laughs> and then uh then we think oh my god and this is where infamous our caller foxy is rob oh yeah rob is foxy fox foxy is rob and rob is foxy <laughs> i totally Forgot why that sounded familiar to me. Mm-hmm. <gasps> Foxy awesome. is Rob. <laughs> and Rob is Foxy. <laughs> so adorable. I loved you a little bit more just then. Remembering that. I was like, this little kid. I'm just imagining a little kid like reading and being like, <gasps> Foxy is Rob. So it turns out that like she's also like pranking her cousin. Pranking is just being mean. Yeah. I, like w- playing jokes and pranking her is jokes? how she thinks of it. But really, she's just being a raging cunt. Yeah, she's like just like like straight up being very mean to people, and sh- she knows it. She she doesn't like think that these are good pranks. She keeps calling them that, but she knows full well that she's just being a bitch. Yeah, she's like, uh, I'm so mean. <laughs> I don't. I just <laughs> it's don't care. It's so fun. So funny to be so mean. Her pranks are okay. We'll we'll get we'll we'll cover all the pranks that she does. Yeah, but then. Um, so she finds out, so then she finds out that Foxy slash Rob, mm-hmm. the chubby boyfriend of Pam, Pam her, her cousin, cousin Pam. is the one who's been sending her the stuff and the police take him away because they think that he's the one who killed the guy, not him. No. Nope. The person who killed the guy is the dad that got fired at the beginning of the book. Um, the head of security the head guy. of security who, who got fired for drinking on the job. Yeah. So there's he, so much happening in this there's, book. We'll get to why he killed mitch in a bit but and then he like confronts reva at the end or not even confronts she shows up by accident (laughs) when he was trying to like raid a safe and he's like whoops now you see me i have to kill you i did this because your dad fired me and i needed money yep um and mitch was gonna like tell on my son anyway that'll that'll become clear later yeah but and then that's the end of the book yeah and she's like, wow, I she guess gets away. ever since mother died, I've been very cold. Like, I've had so many walls up. It's like, you were a cunt. Yeah, you didn't have walls up. Like, you were just you were being so mean. Such a bitch. And then she's like, I guess I should hug my cousin. <laughs> and so she hugs Pam and it's like all better. <laughs> well, she did like apologize to Pam a bunch. It was all just so like she turned on a dime. Also, Pam, Here's there was the like no regret from her before that moment. If I were Pam, I would not have forgiven her so quickly, too. Absolutely like, not. I would have been like, okay, I mean, it's good that you're changing, like, but okay, like... Okay, thank you, but I'm going to have to see you prove that you've changed. Also, like, I don't really want to be in your life right now, because, like, you've been so terrible. Yeah. So here are her pranks. Mm-hmm. She breaks up with her boyfriend. Yeah, prank one, break up. She breaks up with her boyfriend, like, Hank. in a very mean way. Very mean. To Hank. So she's, she's like, like... we're done. She's like, we, ha- we should talk. And he's like, ooh, yay. And she's like, um... Ew, I don't want to be with you. And he's like, what? She's like, get out of my car. And, and she he's leaves like, what? It. And she's like, get out of my car. Like she unlocks the door and opens it yeah. for him across, mm-hmm. across the seat. And she's like, this is simply delicious. Like her inner monologue is insane. It's so obnoxious. She's like, I, I can't believe she's that like, I'm. Oh my God. <laughs> that was even better than I thought it was going to be. She's like, it's so juicy. It's so funny. I'm <laughs> so funny. And then so he's like ditched out on the road and she's like she's like cackling and driving to work one, complete. <laughs> yeah. Drives to work. And, and then dad says I have a bunch of open positions for the holiday season. Mm-hmm. She's like no problem. Mm-hmm. I will hire all of my friends. 
And she's like, first things up, Mitch. He's a straight up yuppie cutie. He's so hot. He's really good at football? Tennis. Oh. <laughs> Hank is the football, football player. And she thinks he's a Neanderthal. That's right. But she also kind of likes it. She does. She likes also like when he's like loses his temper and she will like She's, goad him into yeah, losing his it's temper. Weird. She's got some like issues for sure. Yeah. So she next prank is prank she, two. Prank two is she. So she calls Mitch and she is like, hey, Mitch. Yeah. <laughs> My dad. Do you need do you need any work over the holiday season? And he's like, oh, golly. Uh, yeah. And she's like, good. Now I can get you away from Melissa. And he's like, oh, can my girlfriend Lisa get a job too? And she's like, fuck. <laughs> and then Lisa comes on the phone and she's like, oh, hi. Hi, Lisa. So she's like, fine, come to work. And she's, she's like, like dress, dress to impress. She's like, wear your hottest outfit. Wear your most expensive fancy outfit. Wear glitzy. And she's like, <laughs> I'm going to make her work in the stock room. She's going to be so embarrassed. Yep. Which is so mean. That's so mean. And then she's like, prank three. She is driving down the road and she sees a chubby boy named Rob, who she says in her inner monologue, she's always liked. Yeah. She's like, I've always liked Rob, Mm -hmm. even though like he has asked me out a bunch and I've made it perfectly clear that I am not about to date him because he is chubby. Yeah. Um, I'm going to pull over and ask if he wants a job and I'm going to tell him to wear a suit because he'll be working in PR. But really, he's going to be our mall Santa. Yep. So then the way that the prank comes out is that everybody shows up and it's like in the and stock is room. insulted. Yeah. And the that's girl, all it is. She just she set everybody people. up to be embarrassed and insulted. And like Lissa like starts crying and she's like, oh, like I look like an idiot. And then uh, the guy in charge of the stock room is like, go home and change. She runs off crying. And then um, the guy in the stock room is mad at Reva. Yeah. He's like, oh, you've been like playing your tricks again, mm-hmm. which means she's just like pranking, quote unquote, people all the time all around the store. Yes. <laughs> which is insane. It's insane that she even works there. Well, she's like working to like help out. Yeah. She doesn't need the money because she's oh so rich. She's very rich. She's rich. R- rich. She's rich. And then others are poor. She is rich. Poor, poorer, poorer Pam. Pam. Well, first, oh, yeah, then, prank then four. Uh, Robert comes in though, or not? What's his name? Rob. 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 Oh, R O B B. R O B B. Rob comes in and he's like, B-B. "Uh, what the fuck? You told me there was a PR job." And she's like, <laughs> "You don't even have to wear a pillow in front of everybody." And then he's like. It is so mean. And he's just like, okay, um, well, I'm just well, going to keep this the job. job. And she's like, mm, prank number three complete. <laughs> Reva, you've done it again. <laughs> and then um, prank number four is she doesn't give Pam a job. So Pam calls and she's like, ew, my poor cousin. She reminds me that not everybody can have things that they want. <laughs> and so I'm going to remind her. <laughs> oh, there was this – I was reading Dear Prudence – and there is this uh, person that wrote in. And I love when like a person that writes in gets torn apart <laughs> by Prudence. So this woman writes in and she's like, hi. Um, so my friend, here's the thing. I have a child and my friend can't have children. And she's like always asking to hold my child. And like <laughs> I've made jokes like, oh, you're trying to steal my kid because you can't have them. <gasps> and like my friends say I'm being mean. But like, oh, my God, honestly, like I just feel like. I'm I am right in being scared that she's like like why is she always trying to help out with me and the kid and she's like I don't know I just feel like I need some solidarity here because everyone's attacking me and dear prudence was like listen (laughs) you are a small person (laughs) like you the thing that you don't want to face is that someone is the is the scary realization that some people don't get everything they want in life and the fact that this friend wants children 
and is merely doing kind things for you reminds you that you may not get everything you want in life. And that <laughs> is sad. And like just tore her apart. It's like, oh, how small of you to take someone doing a kindness for you and twist it around into, oh, they're trying to steal my baby. Like just rip them. Apart. I was like, yes, <laughs> I love that. Um, Isn't there a dear Abby or dear Anne? Mm -hmm. Um where it's like the woman is talking about going on a cruise and it's like, and I don't invite my sister because she's too poor and she wouldn't be able to go anyway. And like people are telling me I should invite her places, but like I know she'll never be able yeah. to afford it. And she just like tears her a new asshole. Yeah. It's, it's it is like, well, why don't you invite her and she can make the decision if she's yeah. going to go. Yeah. It's like, I'm planning a super fun trip with all my girlfriends and I know she can't go. So why would I? <laughs> I love when people just like you can tell like they're you've like answered your own question, you horrible person. They're like trying to cloak it in some way, in a way that like makes them not bad, yes. but it's still so bad. Because because they don't have that piece of their brain telling them to empathize, mm -hmm. they can't even see how bad of a cover. Yeah, they've put on it. There was it's one. Like, I'm just concerned about her lack of wealth. Is exactly. all. It's, I'm being a good person. I'm just trying to like make it so she doesn't have to say no. Yeah. It's like, but she can say no, and she will. It's just nice to know that she's being included. Yeah. The um, there was one where a it was a similar classist thing where um this woman was had given um a bunch of yarn to uh her daughter in law for a Christmas present. And the next year, the daughter had worked like over the whole year and made them like this beautiful blanket and gave them this blanket. And she was like, oh, I made the blanket with the yarn you gave me. And she was like, I was disgusted that she didn't bother to buy new yarn. Like no one taught her how to give a present. What? Yeah. What? Yeah. And she's like, and my husband keeps saying to let it go. And my son is mad at me because I have hinted that his daughter was not raised correctly to – like, why would you make a present for someone else with the thing that they got you? And Prudence like, was like... she wasn't supposed to use the yarn? <laughs> she was supposed to... Not for a gift, back to me. That makes no sense. I know. And, it's, and Prudence was like, this person spent a year working really hard to make you a present with something they were grateful that you gave them. But the fact that you can only see giving as a monetary value <laughs> is very sad for you. <laughs> and they were like, you need to stop bringing this up with your family because you are wrong <laughs> that's maybe more insane to me than the other two because like with the other two i'm like well they're just raging cunts yeah. like what are you gonna do this is but insane with her, i'm like but i don't get it you gave her the yarn to use yeah and so not only so you've bought something that now you get to keep yeah no no but she that's was like she should have bought something <laughs> is it just that like she didn't like the blanket. I know. It's like, it's like if it's that you just don't like the blanket, then you don't like the blanket. Yeah. Don't try to like couch it in like, well, no, it's just like, it's not good gift giving practice. What a weird thing. That's so bizarre. Yeah. But I think that could be, I could see my mother like getting mad about something like that. Like it's really funny. It's so, it's like, dude, but like this person like worked like for a year on this thing for you. It's just like the source of the yarn doesn't really <laughs> matter. <laughs> And if anything, that seems like nicer and more thoughtful. Because then it's a thing you share. Yeah. It's like, oh, you got this for me. I'm going to take it and I'm going to yeah, make something for you. I feel so bad I'm for the woman who back. made that blanket. Like, can you imagine like oh being God. like, oh, I made this like and I just thought it would be like this really cool thing like that. I don't know when you would use it. You would think you would remember the kindness that you gave to me. Yeah. And the person's like. Oh, <laughs> thanks. thanks. And she even wow. said that she said something to her about like, <gasps> the source of the yarn. Like it was crazy. I can't. <laughs> I think <laughs> upset about the source of the yarn. The source of the yarn. That is so confusing. Like she was like, oh, you made it with the yarn I gave you. <laughs> <laughs> what a bitch. I was speaking of mother. <laughs> <laughs> oh, mother says. I am going to make this Christmas tree spinach dip breadsticks for Christmas appetizer. Found it on Pinterest and then sent me a picture. It looks good. Wow. Is that what she made or that's what? No, I think that's the oh, image okay. on Pinterest she found. And also she yeah, did not send me a it. screenshot. She sent me a picture of her computer screen. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds right. Yep. Sounds right. I mean, it looks good. 
So good for her. Okay. So that, that so prank four is I'm not going to give Pam a job because she's too poor. Yeah. And I don't like that she makes me think that people can be poor. I guess. And because she, also, she gives no reason. Well, she's like, I don't like her because like people like her. Yeah. So she's like, I, I don't like her. So she's punished. It's like, why do people like her so much? She's poor and I'm not. And they don't seem to like me as much here's the other thing so she's like people just seem to like pam because she's so nice yeah but from the get-go pam's like i'm gonna fucking get revenge yeah, on we, this bitch we never see nice pam she's not nice she's nice pam does not exist in this book she's either talking about how she's going to exact revenge upon reva mm-hmm. driving a getaway car uh-huh or riding in a getaway car yes <laughs> <laughs> and like talking to foxy or like getting um like attacked from behind yes <laughs> who attacked oh oh right mitch mitch, <laughs> mitch so, like jumps out of the bushes pam's plot in the story is that <gasps> Bizarre. She, her Bizarre. her boyfriend foxy uh who is rob and rob is foxy mm. he's been working at his job at the department store that's another funny thing that um reva did i guess is give a job to Oh, no, she didn't know. Never mind. She didn't know. She didn't know that Pam and Rob were a couple. So Rob did. He got that. He got that job as Santa. Yeah. But we like don't know who he is yet. We think that Foxy and Rob are two different people for like no particular reason. Yeah. Did that really serve the story at all? It was like, oh, that's a surprise. But I don't know why. It. You know what? It helps to hide who Mitch is or like that Mitch it helps to trick us to make us – so first it hides who mm-hmm. killed Mitch because, like, the red herring is Foxy mm-hmm. slash Rob. And then it's like, oh, no, it wasn't him at all. Because remember, it's like we see them get in a fight and you're like, why is this Rob dude fighting Mitch? Like, that's weird. Yeah. And then later she's like, oh, he was fighting because, like, he was going to reveal – that Pam and her friends broke into the department store to try to rob it. Yeah. Oh, so that he must be the killer. Oh no, he's not the killer. It's Mitch's or I'm sorry, it's Mickey's Mickey's dad. dad. Um yeah, I guess the reveal is fun enough that it's fine. Yeah. And I'm fine with it. Yeah. But it wasn't but it like, is a like big, there's huge, no and yeah. especially like because Foxy is like such a bizarre nickname. It is. <laughs> it is. Because also, it seems like <laughs> never gets talked about. Reva just goes, oh, I guess she calls him Foxy. That was it. I guess that's a nickname she gave him. But I would li- like for it would take me so much longer to understand that. I'd be like, wait, I'm sorry. Are you wait, sometimes Foxy? called Foxy? Is, is your middle name Foxy? <laughs> like, what is the origin? Or is Rob your middle name and Foxy's your first name? What? Where did this come? Where? Huh? Yeah. Does everyone else call you Foxy or is it only Pam? <laughs> is this a childhood nickname? Where did this come from? Did your parents call you Foxy as a little kid? <laughs> That's not appropriate. Yeah. So Yeah, so Pam isn't seeing a lot of Foxy Rob because he's been working as Santa. Um so instead she like hangs out with the only other people she has access to. Okay. A couple of burnouts <laughs> named Mickey and clay. clay and clay is like straight up crazy clay is like bad news yeah we she goes to meet them at a 7-eleven to hang out and they're getting snacks and then the the cashier accuses clay of stealing and they insist no and the cashier is <laughs> called the cops already she's like hey mister that's not right he didn't steal <laughs> he didn't steal you can't just accuse him of things he didn't do Except we know instantly that like no. he absolutely has stuff in his pockets. Because he's like, empty your pockets. And he's like, hey, man, how about I fucking kill you? Yeah. <laughs> like, chokes him. Yeah. He straight up chokes him against the cash register. And then they all run and get in Pam's car and and have a police chase. Yeah. They, they almost the hit a truck. Yeah. It's intense. Clay is a fucking like crime driver like he yeah. does this all the time he's in ryan his gosling crimes. Drive. yes he is he's, he's baby he's, driver <laughs> he's ryan gosling and drive he like guns the car to like 95 miles per hour on residential streets is like zipping all around uh-huh and everyone's like ah and then after it's over 
they're like, oh, I've never like they're all horny from yes, from that. Are. They're all like so excited <laughs> by the experience. <laughs> Pam included. They're like, oh my god, I've never been so scared. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she's like, I've it's never like, been so horrified for my life. <laughs> They're all like two seconds away from a threesome yeah. because they're all so high. Yeah. The entire car is like steamed up. Uh-huh. And then he's like, yeah, but uh, I got this little treat treat. And then he gets <laughs> out. out avocado dip. It's, but they it's have, avocado dip? I thought, I thought it was cheese dip. I thought it was Wait, <laughs> canned avocado dip? That'd be that so strange if I translated brown. that in my brain. <laughs> I think I maybe saw that and was like, impossible. Cheese dip. Or something happened in my brain. <laughs> okay, here's the thing. You crazy. did eat guacamole last night. I was there. That's true. So maybe. I almost had avocado toast for lunch. Here's the thing. There's like a seed. You have like an avocado amoeba in your brain. I guess. We I swear it's out. like it's like one of those little Fritos things of like stinky cheese dip. We have, this, we have to find out. Um, Getting there. Getting there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's also he's driving a Pontiac. Yeah, that's not like easy to. No, it's like a boat of a car. <laughs> Wait, what is it? Is it Bean? No, we're both wrong. What is it? All three of them burst out laughing. They were too worked up to stay in the car. They bounded out onto the sidewalk, whooping and cheering. I was so scared. Pam confessed. I've never been that scared before. Secretly, she admitted to herself that she had also found the car chase really exciting. <laughs> the wind had died down a bit, but she tightened the wool muffler around her sore throat. Clay suddenly had a very devilish expression on his face. Hey, guys, look what I got, he said. He reached deep into his coat pocket and pulled out a can of jalapeno dip. Oh, so is it jalapeno cheese dip? That's what I thought it was. Like, you know, those little Fritos things? Maybe. Jalapeno. So you were like, it's green. Avocado. And then you heard, you were like avocado, avocado. and cheese. No, cheese no avocado. <laughs> I never thought avocado. <laughs> canned I avocado. That yeah, is a canned war avocado. Crime. How dare you? <laughs> and then you you read avocado and you thought cheese and and then I was like maybe jalapeno. And then, yes, jalapeno. <laughs> <laughs> and then Clay Pam cried, truly shocked. Mickey gaped, swallowing hard. You mean. It was supposed to go with the chips, Clay said. He laughed and tossed the can high in the air, catching it one-handed when it came down. They all had boners. So he steals jalapeno dip. Yeah. And uh, now they have no chips. Classic conundrum. This is like the hot dogs and hot dog bun t- situation. It is. It's worse, It's maybe. worse, because they literally have no chips. Yeah. What are you going to, like, finger jalapeno dip? This is exactly like the character that we hated in that Chuck Palahniuk book in yeah. our Patreon, patreon.com slash Teen Creeps. Yeah. We covered um, Lullaby by Chuck Palahniuk. It's, um, fuck, what was his name? Something stupid. Like, like jazz. <laughs> jizz. 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 Something. He was disgusting. He, he sucked. He sucked. He should have died instantly. I remember his stupid name. Um, did it start with an O? I don't th- Oliver? No, it's like not a name. It's a tree. It's like acorn or something. <laughs> avocado. <It's> avocado. <laughs> oh, what is an O? Oyster. <laughs> Oyster tree. Oyster. It's that the other people in their Wicca group all had right. tree names. No, 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 no. Not Oyster. Who's Oyster? Oyster is the guy with the red hair. Or I'm sorry. No, the guy with the... The guy that fucks the, um, he's like the fake son. Oyster. That's who I was talking No, about. no. The guy that was eating dip with his fingers was, um. Oh, the, the cop. The, no, the m- morgue guy. The e- 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 oh, e- EMT. E- 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 <laughs> oh, the avocado. <laughs> the <director>. avocado tree. <laughs> EMT, the avocado driver. Avocado driver. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's what I said. I don't know if his name is going to be listed, <laughs> quite honestly. Nash. I think we should just... Something Nash. We should just be quiet while you reread the whole book. <laughs> no. No. It's like all olive. I don't want to reread that. No, I don't ever want to reread that. Um, I was thinking you were saying Clay is like Oyster because he's like a... Annoying. Like thumbing his nose at society. Yeah, he is. Little shit. But he was... I, I was saying that eating with the, the dip with the fingers. The fingers. The finger dip. Yeah. 
Last night, Patrick told I'm both of us sleepy. that he had a friend that used to lick her oh, plate yeah. at restaurants. <laughs> She would lick her plate clean. And he said this happened at a tapas place. Yeah. A shared oh, plate. Shared tiny plate. Restaurant. Shared tiny plates. She, took licking. One and she licked it. I'm sorry. I am sorry. If someone's sorry, that. if you listen to this podcast, I'm very sorry, but that was not okay. No, it's not okay. Here's the thing. I have yes. Have I licked a plate in the privacy of my own home? Yes. It's disgusting and it was not I'm not proud. I would never. Oh my God, never. No. In public. Yeah. The most I'll do is like maybe like scrape with a, a spoon or something. Yeah. If there's yummy sauce. Yeah. Or if I have a chip or something. But like. Well, then I shared that my stepmother would like <laughs> take her finger and wipe it up. Deep entry into her mouth. Yeah. That That is more of a sexual move and less of a utilitarian move. Yeah. No, it was like a weird aggressively <laughs> sexual move yeah. to everybody at the table. Right. This is more of a like, I'm a little doggy. <laughs> Like, what What do you think was on that plate? Let's see. Tapas. I'm going to text Patrick and see if he responds all to Olive juice. We'll, we'll update you guys. <laughs> all sort juice. of sauce. Some kind of like olive with like some a ham. Like some with Spanish sauce, eggs. Like, like tapenade. Um, yeah, tapenade. Some kind of olive tapenade. Patrick. I'm going to say, what was on the plate that the girl licked? He'll know. <laughs> he knows. He knows. Um. Yeah. So the they get chased by the cops, and then later, Clay is like, "Hey, I worked it out with the security guard Mayberry." The the plan from the beginning. It's so insane. These are very dumb teens. It's a very bad. They're plan. below average intelligence teens. Yes. So he, the security guard at Dolby's, the department store that Reva works at and her father owns. Because she's Reva Dalby. Reva Dalby. Um, like, somehow, like, first of all, I would like to know how these two came to have this discussion. Where is the meat cute? Yes. Between where's the Mayberry and fucking and Clay. Clay. What's Clay doing? They, somehow, like, Mayberry, Doesn't the security Mitch's- guard, is like, hey, I have this great idea where I sit on my ass and do nothing while I let you three take whatever you want in the department store after hours and as long as you take like as long as you get me stuff from my christmas list yeah exactly and then they go to do that and mayberry is nowhere to be seen and a different security guard is there and is like hey what the fuck are you kids doing and clay just keeps going it's fine. It's fine. Where's Mayberry? Where's Mayberry? Yeah. The fact that Mayberry is nowhere to be seen and he keeps insisting it's fine, but also doesn't know where he is when yeah. the integral part of the plan was meeting Mayberry outside. Yeah. It's very stupid. And so also, Clay had brought a gun. When he gets out the gun, I'm like, you guys need to get out right now. It does not matter. Like, the, no. Here's the thing. Felony murder. Any murder that occurs during the enactment of a felony even if you're not at all involved and you're just in the felony you are found liable uh or you you could be found guilty of um of felony murder wow so felony murder is one of the levels of murder yeah so yeah like a whole thing of like nobody has to die like please we're not going to kill anyone it's like really for everybody involved because even even if you're even if you didn't pull the trigger yeah if you were because your there. actions mm-hmm. led to that consequence mm-hmm. and the felony just like bumps it up already. So misdemeanor, you're lucky, but felony, I'm sure what they're doing is felony. It's armed. Well, it's breaking and entering, breaking and entry theft. Yeah. And then once they're confronted, he pulls out a gun, he pulls out a gun which is, a, uh, I would say assault. Yeah. Um, so and like that security guard gets shot. But like from behind, but they don't know that because Clay's gun wasn't loaded. They like fucking cut and run. They hear the next day that the security guard died and somebody got twenty five thousand dollars from the safe. And they were like, but that wasn't us. I know. She's like, we did a bad job of robbing. Yeah, We didn't get anything. And we and then Clay's like, and I didn't load my gun, so I didn't kill anybody. And they're like, what? I know. And at that point, too, I was like, I don't trust Clay. Like, yeah, I don't I know. Like, like, don't take him at I face value. Yeah, I didn't. And I was also like, what? Yeah. I was like, wait, what? So it turns out that Mayberry did that so that he and 
Mickey's dad, who had just gotten fired, could rob the safe. Yes. It, so Mayberry was just like, yeah, I got like three kids. They they think they're I'm going to help them rob the store. So it'll be a perfect dis- distraction for the other security guard and we can rob the safe. And he's like, great. And then when that's happening, he sees that his kid is one of the three and goes, oh, no, <laughs> bang, and shoots the security guard, even though he was not in imminent danger. No. So he kills the security guard. And then later, Mitch, um, who was just like there and saw it happening. Because Mitch was doing something with the videos. So Docking. Something with VCRs. And, and no, that's Hank. Security. Oh my god. So Mitch was just like <laughs> Mitch there. was not Hank, and M- Hank was not, not Mitch. Mitch. But Foxy was Rob. Foxy and was Rob. Rob was Foxy. Um, he was just like there after hours or stalking or something, and Doing he something. sees every everybody, but he doesn't know what's happening. So then the, the next day, when he hears that the security guard died and they somebody stole twenty five thousand dollars, he's like. Oh, I guess that that was Clay, Mickey, and Pam. I'll start blackmailing them. Yep. Because I'm brilliant. Because every teen in this book is an idiot. His way of blackmailing them. Except for Hank. Hank has a way with machines. He does. And um, is actually, turns out, nice. Yeah. He's a good little electrician. Mm -hmm. But Mitch is like, he calls her, he calls uh, Pam. He keeps calling her and he's like, hey, give me the money. (laughs) Give me ten thousand dollars, or I'm gonna tell everybody, you dirty little whore. <laughs> <sighs> what are you wearing? And she's like, "Hello." <laughs> uh. so later, he like attacks her on the street, and she turns around. And he's uh. like, "Oh, you shouldn't have turned around." And okay, he runs. his way of attacking her is very stupid. Okay, she's like, "La la 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 la." She's like walking down the street. <laughs> She's like, ooh, I feel a presence. And then he's like, it's me. And like jumps behind her and like puts like a hand over her mouth. And he's like, I'm going to let you go. Don't turn around. And she's like, okay, turn around. And he's like, fuck. <laughs> and she, she's like, it's you. And he's like, yeah, give me some money. Give, give me some money. And she's like, no. No, we didn't do it. <laughs> so she runs back and she's like, Foxy, other guys. Mitch is blackmailing me. And so then... Foxy Rob attacks Mitch at the store the next day. They're pummeling. They're tussling. And that's why they're fighting. And that's why it looks to Reva like when Mitch ends up in a box with a knife in his back (laughs) that she thought it was Foxy Rob. But actually it was the dad, the head of security dad again. Back at it again. Like to protect his son again. Because he overheard. Because he found out that Mitch was trying to blackmail him. Because he... This man does not know how to protect his family. No, he's very bad at it. And also, like, they are not good at keeping secrets from him. No. Because... So they're like, this is the plan. dun 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 uh, Like, montage theft movie. Like, heist movie montage. And they're, like, laying out the plans, talking about it. And the dad is, like, snoring in the next room. And they're like, don't worry. He's drunk. He's not hearing anything. But I'm like, uh... Don't take chances. Like maybe just go in the bedroom, close yeah, the door. Don't do that. I mean, and he wasn't hearing anything. Otherwise, he would have known that yeah. his son was involved. But, but don't then, take that chance. Also, and then later though, when they're like, "Oh, Mitch is blackmailing us," and the dad's like right there and he hears it. Oh, right. <laughs> and they're like, "Oh, Mitch, uh, he's blackmailing us because we robbed the store." Yeah, they, they really lay out the exposition, <laughs> and, and then the dad's like. <laughs> fake snore <laughs> and then he's fake like snoring. i must protect my family i'm going to i'm gonna stab go stab that, that guy. kid in the back and i'm gonna stick him in a crate <laughs> that has a big bow on it also and then that crate's gonna get delivered to reva because her name was still on it when rob was trying to prank her with a mannequin in the box out of all the pranks, uh-huh. did one of them stick out to you as not like the others? <laughs> did one of them was involve- it perhaps the one where it seemed like a perfume bottle full of blood? No, it was the one that involved bodily harm to her person. <laughs> Why was that just let go? Why was everyone letting that go? Also, I couldn't stop. So this is the book. Where that Kelly talked about and that everybody reminded her mm-hmm. it's the scene where somebody has stuck a needle in her lipstick 
and she puts it on and drags the needle across her lips. And it says something like it took her a second to register the pain. Which means it's deep. Which means it's deep. And she was dragging yeah, the it entire across mouth. her whole lip. And then just blood is dripping down yeah. her chin. This was also a Foxy Rob prank. Mm-hmm. But that's an attack. No, that's literally like an assault. <laughs> and And then she just... Could you not stop thinking about a giant scab on no. her lip? Honestly, <laughs> here's the thing. She later on keeps like coating her scabby fucking lips with lipstick. And I'm like, ew. <laughs> the whole book. That's when she makes out with Mitch. Oh my gosh. She, her lipstick covered no, oh, scab oh, mouth. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. So she, this happens at the, be- this is the opening scene of the book. The it rest is. of the book, she has like fucking like leather face situation <laughs> and she's and she acts like it's nothing here's the thing and she's also like she's like i'm so hot and i'm like there is so pretty. a waking nightmare on your mouth like this is <laughs> like, very bad you look like you probably look like something ate your lip yeah, it's very bad <laughs> that is no joke when you put lipstick on you press yeah and you drag yeah around the whole lips I think she only got the bottom. I'm sure. I think maybe, but still. But still, it, it's like the whole bottom lip. She sliced so she's her. Just got this, like, <laughs> she's like the Joker. So she's got this like, it would have to be, it would just be an open sore for a while. Right. And then it would be this hideous scab. Also, I was like, does she not get stitches? Like how bad like, is this cut? Yeah. And why is she putting lipstick over it? You would not put lipstick over that. I, Are you crazy? You know, I am like literally it was getting chills crazy. about putting lipstick over, over a, a scab lip. And then, and then making out with someone who isn't your boyfriend yeah. and getting caught by the girlfriend and and then just like reaching up a sexy thumb to wipe the lipstick off of his mouth that you have just rubbed all over him with your scab. Here's the thing. That was not lipstick. <laughs> she broke that scab it open. To making it, blood. it was blood. That's what I thought. It was too. blood. It was like he was covered in my magenta lipstick and I was like, and also blood and also blood. Also blood. <laughs> Throughout the whole book, anytime she was doing anything, I was like, what's happening with the lips? Like the I, lips are a question. I couldn't they never stop. get answered. The, and she doesn't even mention no like one, how they feel. Are She's they never hurting? in pain. Like, it's never, never like, oh, I laughed and it hurt. I broke the scab open yeah. again. Yeah. Every time, like, she's like, I bit into a bagel and blood went everywhere. <laughs> it's literally just like, <laughs> she's fine. And then one time later in the book, she's like, oh, yeah. Like, she was like putting on lips again and she's like, oh, yeah, I uh, sliced my lip open earlier. Like, <laughs> oh, well. It's healing nicely. And I was like, but it was still covered in a scab. I know. It's, uh, and that, oh, the. If you split your lip, yeah, it's painful. And it splits over and over again. Yeah, because it, it's hard to heal. Yeah. It's hard to heal in that spot. But <laughs> and, the, and then, like, it never gets talked about the fact that he stuck a fucking needle in her lipstick. And that was his first prank. That was maybe. Th- the timeline is confusing. Confusing. But I think it is the first prank. So it, it's the first but, like, she prank never that goes, happens in the book. She never goes, okay, so you didn't. So you didn't kill Mitch. I'm glad that you didn't kill Mitch. You put a needle yeah. in my lipstick mm-hmm. and I dragged it across my face. I, you cut me. That's not a, that's, you put a needle in my lipstick. Like but, I would just be screaming that over yeah, and no, over. You put a needle in my fucking lipstick. Yeah. And then you, and then you followed that with like, a thing of blood and then like a mannequin in a box like why are the pranks getting worse <laughs> really de-escalate yeah they're like n- like way less stakes he did he did not take a sketch class from ucb he doesn't understand you class. go the opposite you have to direction. heighten <laughs> this is it should have worse. gone mannequin, mannequin blood, blood needle. needle interesting twist mm-hmm. mannequin needle remember she spills blood everyone runs away mm-hmm thing of her own blood Ooh, interesting with a note but, you've always liked yourself the best oh i like that touch but it didn't would happen. he have been able to get enough blood he dresses mm-hmm. up as a nurse yeah he drives a blood bank van yeah into the department He's store like, parking lot it's the only arena in which she is caring about others yes so she donates blood right and he keeps it or he's like I have to attend to your lip. And then he just like puts 
like the needle thing. Like he's like, I have to sew it up, but he's just taking blood. <laughs> so he like just takes a bunch of blood and she's like, what's happening? And she like doesn't notice. And he's like, it's being a it's doctor. Like, don't worry about it. Here's some juice and a fucking cookie. Yeah. You cunt. Yeah. And then he takes it and then he's like, okay, this is for like my prank later. <laughs> for my really good prank <laughs> the pranks are not pranks no one is doing a prank no, no one's pranking anybody here maybe the mannequin is a bit of a prank the mannequin is a little funny because she keeps getting Cause, scared by me because that's too. a situation in which you're like faking her out yes and giving her a jump scare i Whereas guess sending the just blood. straight up sending someone blood is just a threat yeah i mean i guess it's like ooh, what could this but here's the other no, thing it's just threatening. blood looks like blood yeah. When you see it, you're like, "That's not perfume. that's fucking blood. It's like viscous." Yeah, and it's you're red. also and you're also like, "That's not fucking paint. That's no. blood." No, and then, um, oh, another thing that's like planted is like, oh, there's like energy issues, like the electrical, the electrical problems. problems are like it's shorting out a lot. That comes back later because the way that Mickey's dad dies, I forgot this is how he dies. Yeah, so she's like, ah. <laughs> and he's like shooting at her and it's like bullets, bullets whizzing, whizzing. <laughs> she's like matrixing these bullets yes, she is. and then she's like I'm gonna run to the side of the like balcony looking you know in a mall where mm-hmm. it's like upper story also remember how I have a scab for a lip <laughs> <laughs> she's like did you forget cause Don't I forget, did cause, cause you shouldn't and then um, yeah she's like ow my lip <laughs> it's split again <laughs> And then he's like, oh, I'm going to get you. And he like dives t- <laughs> to get her. Which is, he goes sailing over the balcony. Like he, like we said, he's not good at planning. Because <laughs> here's the thing. This is very stupid. I, I would don't... not dive like this I towards. Would, a... I wouldn't <laughs> dive anywhere at any all. time. No, you don't need to dive. At I someone. might dive for safety. Sure. But like, not to if, get a person. Yeah. If I were Reva, I would have maybe dived behind something sure but he dives of dove he dives like at her face (laughs) and she's just like whoop and like bends down and he just like keeps going and falls on a big thing of christmas lights that all short out and he gets fried my coworker told me a story about how when she used to work doing in a mall doing portraits of Mm -hmm. people um like caricatures like um not caricatures, but actual just okay, portraits. Cool. And she had a couple sitting in front of her and she was like finishing up on the woman. And then all of a sudden just someone fell <gasps> from the fifth story balcony and splattered on the ground. What? Like 10 feet away from her, like behind the couple. So she was like right in the line of sight. Oh my God. And he just fell and it was just like blood and it like limbs poking out in different ways and she said but then i had to like keep drawing the guy oh my god (laughs) so this person fell and the actual just cleaning crew of the mall came up to to clean up all this blood and Mm -hmm. person and she's just like drawing (laughs) the man and the couple (laughs) (laughs) good god that's horrible it is horrible there was um I just heard this story from um, one of Micah's coworkers um, that he used to live in this apartment and his next door neighbor during, do you remember that heat wave in like 2013? That was like, it was like, uh, yes, at the time the hottest yeah. LA had been. So it was like <laughs> it's 113. Hard to, it's hard to recall a time. <laughs> it when... really is hard to recall a time when we weren't having insane heat waves. Yeah. But I do remember that. I do remember that. apartment them. was a fucking oven. Yeah. So that week, his neighbor died <gasps> and no one found his body for a week. No. And he was on vacation at the time. <gasps> uh, and the downstairs <sighs> neighbors just heard the TV like with static for a long time. Mm-hmm. And so finally they – like it was like days. Mm-hmm. So they called and then police came and took him away. But he was a hoarder. Oh, no. Yeah. So then he – like when he came back – um, he like saw that, you know, they were kind of cleaning some stuff out and he just like went to go look at the window and he breathed in and he <gasps> was like, the smell was like, unlike, uh. he, he was like, it was a wicked smell. Like he was like, oh, God. he's like, you know, rotting chicken. He's like, but deeper. And I was like, <laughs> Oh God. So then he was, so then, um, they cleaned the place up. They rented out to these, uh, to these two girls 
And um, I guess enough time had passed where they didn't have to tell the renters, hey, someone died in this apartment. So they, it's these two girls. Um, it must have been a while then. Yeah. It took them a while to clean it up. So then these two new girls come and they're like very hardcore like pita vegans. And he's like, we can't tell them. No, like we can't tell them. Like they will freak out. They end up moving out. Then there's these two new girls that come in and they're pretty cool and they start becoming friends with them. And everyone's just like, we can't – like. I'm not going to tell them that someone died in there. Like, I don't know what to do. So they're just keeping it a secret for like a year. And then one of their other neighbors was like this couple who like they were always drunk and always fighting and just like very loud and boisterous. And the guy was like drunk one time and walking around and he's just like, hey, remember when uh, that guy died in his apartment? And the girls were like, what? And he's like, oh, someone died in your apartment. It's like this (laughs) random drunk dude like just tells them, hey, like someone fucking died in your apartment. And it was really bad. (laughs) <laughs> but, oh god he's like i will never forget that smell for the rest of my life oh my god isn't that disgusting Ugh. deeper but deeper deep. it was wicked it was it's, a wicked he was like, oh, smell. It was a wicked smell <laughs> <laughs> oh boy yeah. but the body that is found in this book is very fresh soups fresh soups fresh in a bow mm-hmm. just like farm to table <laughs> Do you remember, to table fresh. Do you remember that? Did you watch uh, Top Chef? No. So there was this one contestant that was like so racist. I really didn't like her. I forgot her name. But good. There was this. Better um, be lost to time. Yeah. There was this um, Asian chef that was on the show with her. And um, it's been really funny if you were like, there's this Asian on the show with her. <laughs> <laughs> well, she was an Asian woman. Uh huh. And she also cooked some Asian food. Mm hmm. This woman would this other chef contestant would be like, oh, well, all she can do is Asian food. Like she can only do Asian food. She's like, I don't cook. Um, what did she say? She's like, I don't cook like any type of um, she's like, I don't cook like ethnic food. I cook farm to table. What? what? <laughs> and I remember reading a recap that was like, hello, honey, that's grocery shopping. That's not a style of cuisine. <laughs> so, like. You think ethnic food isn't farm to table? Yeah. Like, you think it can't be? You think that, like, when it began, it wasn't, like, farm, farm to, to table? table. <laughs> I don't cook, like, ethnic food. I cook, like, white food, which is, therefore, the base and universal <laughs> and normal. Yep. Um, hey, you know what? There's no cooking in this book. But there is jalapeno soup. <laughs> <laughs> And you can eat that. That's raw. where we got our yeah mm, yum, 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 yum 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 yum. Yeah, there's Farm a to table. Here, there's <laughs> avocado dip. Farm to pocket. <laughs> pocket jalapeno. Ooh, and but, a little to go container. Aww. Oh, you can just keep it open right in there. Yeah, you can dip anything in it. Mm. Cigarette um, butts. <laughs> parking receipts. Papers. Papers. Um, sticks. Um, old gum. Um, like a popsicle stick I found on the ground. Like you can, oh, you can put Fruit Loops, in it. <laughs> Fruit Loops, Fruit Loops. If you get, if um, you get a pocket, pocket. Did it? You can, you can dip a pocket Fruit Loops in a pocket jalapeno. You could do like um bugles, bugles on your fingers, fing bugles, <laughs> fing bugles. Okay, do 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 do. We have an update. On the tapas woman. Oh, good. The plate liquor. Oh, hell yeah. Okay. So I was like, I just texted, what is what was on the plate that the girl licked? And he goes, oh, it didn't matter wh- what the food was or where we ate. The example I gave last night was in a tapas place. Shared plates in Chicago. And I said, what kind of dish is it? Saucy, creamy. He's like, oh, sauce for sure. But she would literally do it with anything. And I said multiple times. He says, girl, this is something <laughs> she did all the time and defended at just about every meal. <gasps> my god this is not good <laughs> this is really not good who raised this girl this is really bad who raised her and what is their fucking damage <laughs> i'm gonna bring back saying what's your damage I've cordelia decided. line yeah ah what's your damage 90s line very yeah. 90s or yeah. does she say what's Buffy. your childhood trauma it's your childhood trauma i love that yeah very good cordelia had all the best lines um Okay. Are there any other pranks that she pulls, Reva? Let's see. We had the 
prank of breaking up. We had the prank of job, not that job. Mm-hmm. We had the prank of poor. Oh, so this is what she does to Lissa too. This is part two of the prank. Oh yeah. So she's like, hey, prank of heartbreak. Uh, guy that is in charge of assigning people to work in different places. Make sure. And she's like, I'm trying to make sure that he can hear me, that Mitch can hear me. She's like, make sure Mitch and Lissa are not in the same department. And then she's like, I nailed it. And my lip is crusty. <laughs> and then she walks Me away. and my crusty ass <laughs> lip. I fucking killed just then. She, Everybody's looking at how beautiful me <laughs> and my flaking bloody lip are. It's not yet scabbed, but it will be. It will be. Right now, it is fucking raw. <laughs> it is like looking at a piece of raw meat mm-hmm. on a model's face. It's like slightly oozing. It's like a fucking uncooked strip of bacon on my face right now (laughs) nitrate free strip of bacon on my face applewood smoked farm to table farm to table not ethnic not not ethnic it's farm to table what about farm to table doesn't make sense to you (laughs) so she's walking around with her farm to table lips she like leaves and then um she corners mitch while he's doing whatever and she's like, hey, I really want you. And then he's like, oh. Uh, and then she macks on him really hard with her. Now, I would say it's like a creme brulee lip. This made me touch my lip. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. It's like a just cracked creme brulee. Yeah. Creme brulee. It's like thin. Mm-hmm. But um, it's very soft underneath. Oh, but instead of like that like delicious caramelized sugar. Yeah. Um, it's uh, jank ass magenta lipstick. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So it's like it's that consistency. Yeah. Covered yeah, yeah. In no. Magenta. No, see here, no no hate, no shame because mm-hmm. I have owned Wet and Wild jewelry. <laughs> I'm sorry, Wet and Wild lipstick. It's that. It's like It's that. It's the kind of it's lipstick like old. Old. It's been sitting in it has your caboodle smell. for like 2 years. And it's the kind that like no matter what, it's on your teeth. Yeah, no it's matter too slippery. what, it's so slippery. It's, it's not, not staying cute. in place. It doesn't look good. It's it's. I mean, wet. It's very wet. It's wet, and it's, it's on drippy. top of a pretty wet scab. Yeah, <laughs> a new scab. It's either wet. It like in places it's wet, and in other places it's so dry. Very it's dry. A scab. <laughs> Extremely dry. And maybe the scab is I'm made like, of lipstick. Like it is. Yeah, because because like it's you can't get something to stick naturally no, no it so won't. It, you are it painting the scab can't. the paint now the scab just is magenta yeah it's and, not coming off and every time if she like moves a little bit it'll crack and then blood starts coming out and then it's again you have to wait for it to dry so you have to kind of like pat it dry yeah and then like kind of like <laughs> get get it dry and then you and like then- have to daintily just gently Put on more lipstick because if you do it too hard, it's again. And you can't just take the tube and drag it across. No, 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 no. That's how you got in this, this situation <laughs> to begin with, and you've learned, hopefully. So probably you not to do if you're Reva. You you rub it on your finger and you like dab 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 uh-huh. on the scab. Mm-hmm. Here's the thing: you're fooling nobody. And then also like, it's not just blood either. It's just that that like clear. Just like, yeah, it's like it's, ooze. it's oozing. It's very bad. It's just like an oozing sore and you're also like where is this coming from and you're also what like is i'm this? so fucking hot right now i'm definitely getting mitch away from lissa <laughs> she's like i'm and nailing it so she's just got this like dried <laughs> broken open oozing, oozing bloody lip and, it's, and lissa oh. walks over and she's like what she's like she actually what does she say she's like whoa yeah she says whoa <laughs> um i What's great about this is that none of this gets said. You just know because that's how scabs work. Yeah. No, we... You don't have to. None of it's on doesn't have to tell us, which is, I think, to his credit. Yeah. Thank God. Because that would be over-describing. I'm sorry. It's Maywood, not Mayberry. <laughs> oh. Oh. Whoops. <laughs> Very similar, you know, though. Very whatever. similar. Very similar. You get it. Um, yeah. Are you looking for something or... <laughs> What if I was you were looking just for, like reading the book. It's like, oh, sorry. Hmm? What? <laughs> hmm? I was looking for this. <gasps> I just found out her whole name. <gasps> Damn. I can't say it on the show. No, you absolutely can't. I'll Make tell you up after. a souffle name. Okay. Um, it's um uh uh 
eclair. Okay. That actually Here. works pretty well. Show me in all. Uh, eclair. Sugared eclair. Um, honeyed. Um, eclair sucrose. Sucrose. Oh, yeah. Eclair sucrose. Um, peppermint. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know. Eclair sucrose tapas. Oh, Eclair sucrose tapas. <laughs> okay. Eclair sucrose tapas, which is a very different individual than Auntie Souffle. Very different. Yeah. Because she's like salt of the earth. Like, I'm going to lick my damn plate. Souffle would never. I don't think she has a tongue. <laughs> <laughs> or if she does, it's very small. Like a little bird. But it only licks up apple dishes. <laughs> only apple dishes. <laughs> only apple dishes. Like tiny, So teeny, like if tiny she has like dishes. an apple pie, mm-hmm. she'll lick up the apple ooze. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The apple goo. Apple goo. Um, um, that just reminded me that I have to bring something to the holiday work potluck tomorrow. And I don't know what I'm going to bring. Costco sized applesauce. Tiny spoon. <laughs> People at work do know about Auntie Souffle, but not enough of them for that to be. She one time we went to dim sum, mm-hmm. and she uh, couldn't wait for the dim sum to come, even though there's like carts all <laughs> around. And so she like daintily got out this little. Um, it was not even a Ziploc bag. It was like the sandwich fold over bag. Oh no! Of peeled grapes. The peeled grapes thing. It's too much. It's too much. And then she ate like one and a half. One and a half? She, she ate like little bites <laughs> and then like so crinkly rolled it up. Crink- <laughs> so crinkly, rolled it up so crinkly, very loud. And everyone's just like, oh. <laughs> and then um, put it like gently into her big diaper bag. At <laughs> 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 the time, no babies around. No babies at all. She put it in her big diaper no bag. No babies at all. No babies at all. No babies. <laughs> big diaper bag and then um demanded that we order like the most expensive thing of dim sum and then like ate like a sliver and then was like oh this is no this is too spicy (laughs) and like couldn't eat the rest of it of course it was too spicy of course it was too spicy you eat only fruit souffle you only eat fruit all you eat is apples cheese is spicy for you Oh, this cheddar is so sharp. Oh, it's so sharp. This cheddar is so sharp. Oh my goodness. Could I could I just could I just watch you eat the cheddar? Um, that sounds like something she would say. <laughs> Thank you. That sounds like something she would say. <laughs> she um yeah. Interesting woman. Yeah. Very interesting. Um okay, what else happened in this book? Anything? Uh we got we got the oh, yeah. Well, Michael wanted to go see Santa. I will say the way that Reva figures out that Rob, that Foxy Rob wasn't mm-hmm. Santa at that moment is pretty clever in its oh, own way. She takes yeah. Michael to see Santa because her her brother Michael has been asking to. And she finally does. And Michael goes up and sits and tells Santa his wish list. And he comes down and he's like, that wasn't the real Santa. She's like, how did you know? Um, that's one of Santa's helpers. But like, how did you know? And he said, it, he had a fake stomach. It was a pillow. And she's like, eh, well, it's a Santa's helper. It's not a real Santa, blah, blah, blah. And then she like wakes up in the middle of the night. And she goes, does. Oh! She has like a Nellie's in the red room. Yeah, exactly. Moment. <laughs> and because she realizes like, oh, Rob, Foxy Rob didn't need padding. Yeah, because cause she had jammy. made fun of that. Yep. Um, and so she realizes it wasn't Foxy Rob. And therefore he doesn't have an alibi for where he was when Mitch got stabbed in the back. Mm-hmm. But then he does later because it turns out he was with Pam. Because she's like, he's my boyfriend, Foxy, and we were talking. What do we do? Just talk. She, she was, was crying. Just like, yeah, she was upset. She about, was talking the whole thing. She's like, yeah. I robbed like a, a store. Yeah. Also, yeah. Here's the thing. If I were Foxy, I'd be like, who the fuck are these friends? <laughs> Don't hang out with these people. I think both Foxy and um, Reva think that. Yeah. I mean, Foxy does say something to her about it, I think. And she's like, well, you're you're working so much. Yeah. And then Reva's like, she should not hang out with those burnouts. When she first and said this that. Is, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, when she first said that, I thought she was being a bitch. But 
that's exactly what I was about yeah. to say. Is it first it's like, God, you're such a bitch, Reva. And then later it's like, yeah, you need to get away from these guys. They're burnouts. They're so, like, I'm just picturing them as like a little crew. And I'm like, ew. Clay's like shoplifting and they, he gets a scheme to rob a department store. Yeah. Come on. Get out of there. They're just like Beavis and then and Mickey butthead. is just troubled because he has an alcoholic father who just He's lost very his troubled. job. It's tough. Mickey needs Mickey intervention. I think here's the thing. I mean, they both need intervention, but I don't see it cl- clicking with Clay. Mickey, if we take Clay out of the situation, out of the equation, I think it's fine. Mm-hmm. I think they're good friends, and it'll be fine. Mm-hmm. Clay is a bad element. Clay's Clay is he's Clay's, a bad apple. Clay's. Clay is sorry. He's having at, a bit of a yawn. He's yeah. He's. Clay's. Not, he's not good. Not good. And I know that he has a like temper. A judgmental he's, mom. He's not he's, stable. He's not stable. It's not just he like choked. I don't want you hanging out with him. Yeah, he <laughs> he choked a man. He attacked a Seven Eleven cashier. He was brandishing a gun. He's not. He drove the car at ninety five miles an hour to run away from the cops. Like he's not. Even though like all he had to do was go. Oh right, jalapeno dip. He could literally yeah, just I'll be like, for I forgot. I'll yeah. pay for it. Or like. You got me. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Or literally just throw it down and run. Or just even if you want to steal it, just be like, run and run. You don't have to assault the cashier. No, that's not normal. Mm-mm. Shoplifting, somewhat normal. Yeah. Assaulting a 7-Eleven cashier, abnormal. Abnormal. Mm-hmm. Abnormal. Um, is there anything else on this book? I'm really glad I forgot that Foxy is Rob. I remembered it, it so it didn't, didn't it surprise, did surprise me. me. So but I was right there with you. Foxy is Rob. Well, so for me, and didn't... Rob is Foxy. Foxy. It's for me, I'm, I I remembered, and then so I was yeah. bummed. But here's the thing: reading it, I I wondered. I'm glad that it surprised you because, like, I wondered, like, because I knew I was like, is this obvious or is it not? It wasn't. That's cool. It's. Uh, Sometimes having a truly terrible memory has its perks. <laughs> this like is moments. Yeah. That and like being able to just watch seasons of Great British Bake Off over and over again. Yeah. I don't remember anything that happened. I so just I get the pleasure them, just again and again. I just watch them over and over again and like just let it wash over me. Mm-hmm. Even though I've like I know who wins and stuff. Have you been watched? Did you watch the new holiday ones? No, because I was catching up on the beginnings, and mm-hmm. then um, I was catching up on the final season that's out outside of the holiday. I got too bored con- to finish the beginning season. It was like they hadn't figured enough out yet. Like I wasn't getting anyone's personality really. The carpet was unacceptable the carpet was unacceptable it was dark green it was not good mary berry and paul hollywood were boring the critiques were boring mel and sue weren't as silly yeah um the uh paul um paul's facial hair in the newest season not holly not not holiday holiday. hollywood day not holiday so he sometimes has his goatee but i like him better with a beard i like the beard yeah i like a beard a goatee seems like it's, no, don't do that. I Why would you do a goatee? Don't enjoy. And it's here's the thing: some people can pull it off. If you're somebody that's like, "Dang, I have a goatee. I feel bad." Maybe you pull it off. I have never seen someone pull off a goatee. Do you like Iron Man, <laughs> Robert Downey Jr.? I mean, that's specifically a joke. Him having a goatee is a joke, and it's also like from the comics. Like it's like a thing yeah. that like the character did. What about? Lin Manuel Miranda. <laughs> <laughs> I just <laughs> <That's 'cause... laughs> I just spat all over this microphone. <laughs> That's because we were talking about <laughs> we were talking about Miranda it earlier today. Earlier in the day. I can't believe I just <laughs> snorted so hard directly into the microphone. <laughs> I couldn't keep a straight face. <laughs> Uh, so you don't yeah, think that's hot? No. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the closest. Okay. And it's not even a full goatee. It's the like um, under the soul lip patch. hair. Yeah, soul patch. Um, Trent on Daria. <laughs> okay, that's a cartoon. Hottest example. Hottest example. Hottest example. Um, I'm trying to think. Yeah, I think I just prefer like a uniform look. I love 
Beards. Yeah, I love I beards. Guys my fiance look has a beard. Great with beards. My boyfriend has a beard. Yeah, beards are great. Beards are great. Um, Goatee, something weird about them. There's something happening. Something like there's an aggressive energy, an aggressive it's and yet also submissive energy. energy. Yeah. Um, here's the thing. <laughs> another another thing I am not completely on. It would depend. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Giant mutton chops. <laughs> that if you're like a steampunk guy and you like no. live okay 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 you like live in a romance novel uh-huh okay maybe no <laughs> okay i've i've got it mm. okay lin-manuel miranda <laughs> with mutton chops <laughs> Oh, Lin Manuel Miranda with mutton chops in that number for Mary <laughs> no, 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 Don't do this. <laughs> don't do this. And he's, and he's rapping. Uh, and he's rapping uh, the Jabberwocky. <laughs> <laughs> While there's shots of <laughs> minorly interested <laughs> audience members. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. I'm going to see that and I'm going to raise you okay. a chin strap. <laughs> like a sharp, a sharp chin strap. Like sharp. Uh, like, could cut. Like just like, yeah. Like, like one like hair. It's each. just like a shadow. Yeah, it's, like, <laughs> it's, like, it's like a one hair. Just like one, 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 one. That. <laughs> On Lin Manuel Miranda, Lin Manuel Miranda with mutton chops rapping in that number. In that number, on Ellen, what was it on? It was on Good Morning America, oh, okay. and it was a clip from the movie. It wasn't even like he was doing it live. It was, it was a clip from the movie, and then they cut to <laughs> like these older white ladies <laughs> reacting, smiling, and, and all of them just like, yeah, okay, wow, <laughs> wow, okay. God, that clip is so embarrassing. It is. It is. It is. And here's the thing. I couldn't, I could, talented I man, could not figure no. out what the story was. I was having to concentrate so hard. And what I think the moral of the story was is if you're dumb, don't even try to get smart because it's not who you are. Here, here's the thing. Uh huh. I think a big part of why I was cringing so much mm-hmm. is because in all of us, there is a theater nerd. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's holding a mirror up. Yeah. And so you're just like, ah, you don't. I feel like I am doing it. Yeah. When I watch it, I feel like it's me I'm watching. Yes. And, and then I'm like, oh, no, I am in a nightmare. Mortifying. <laughs> I can't stop. Oh, no. Rapping this song. I can't, I can't stop and, speak rapping. And like, like. I can't stop slam. Like slam poetry. I'm doing slam poetry, slam poetry in a Mary Poppins movie. In a bright purple suit and like running up and down on books. And like sometimes I'm doing an accent. Sometimes, sometimes. sometimes I'm Cockney and sometimes there's a penguin and all these white ladies are watching me. <laughs> on a 2D set. On a 2D set. <laughs> so this is the thing. Talented guy, really talented guy. So talented, so, so driven, so driven, so, so ambitious, smart. so I, smart. I bet he's really smart. So smart, and um, like, and I, I admire like, him greatly. I, t- it is not for me. It's just not for it me. It's not. For it's me. just. And, and here's the thing: if he's it's not for, for you, me. great. I love that. Not gonna yuck your yum. Not gonna yuck your yum. Not gonna yuck your Lin Manuel Miranda yum. I just don't need to just be no. there while you watch it. No not no thank you but thank That's you so, so much. nice of you thank you but so no, much but absolutely you. not in yeah. no way in hell <laughs> thank you you are so kind so kind and so thoughtful yes um and i truly appreciate it mm-hmm. um you yeah uh, i'm sorry i so sorry so sorry i'm so sorry you're so nice and you're so kind i just um in no way uh would accept yeah i mean i honestly Thank you for thinking of me. I like I so appreciate it, but like mm-hmm. over my fucking dead body. Yeah, like I I just want to say you're such a good friend. Mm-hmm. I mean, first I just want to say that first. first you're such a good friend. Um and usually your gifts are amazing. Oh, absolutely. Um but I please tell me you got the gift receipt. Yeah, please tell like, me you got truly, the gift receipt. Truly like I know everybody loves Hamilton. Yeah. Everyone loves it. Who Everyone doesn't? loves it. Me maybe. <laughs> Here's the thing. The only version of Hamilton I've ever seen 
was the day after I broke up with my boyfriend of five years in a bootleg version. <laughs> in a version where the guy had to keep hiding his camera when people clapped. <laughs> So it wasn't a great experience for me. No. Personally, for me, no. Mm-hmm. Um, here's the thing, though. Great. Good for you. Thank- oh, wow. Yeah. I'm so happy that you got to be an audience member at yeah. Good Morning America and I'm watch not this. here to take that away from you. Um, but It's just that if I have to hear the opening song or the song um, about him not going to not gonna miss his shot, mm-hmm. I will kill myself. Mm-hmm rather than experience another morning where that's stuck in my head while I'm trying to get ready Here's for Here's the thing. He's a genius. He's a genius, but he's a genius oh my God. your blood on his hands. <laughs> <laughs> so I just need Lin-Manuel to know yeah. that you've killed Lindsay K. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he, he is responsible for that. He's responsible for great art and also my death. Yeah. 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 And for having... And I'm, but I'm chops. glad that you like him. Yes. Oh yes. God, I don't want to take that away from you. No, at and all. I don't even want him to stop working. No, he's great. No, he should keep making things. And he brings I so much joy to so many them, people. It's all. Um, I don't know what it is that like it just doesn't click with me. It's the slam poetry as Mary Poppins musical. I think that maybe is. It. I can't. I can't deal with like. Also, it. <sighs> I'm not sure that I know enough about it, but it feels like an insult to the history of slam poetry Oh, to take it and turn it into what he has turned it into. I think he is rapping. Because it's like a... Mm. <laughs> here's, the, here's the thing. It's Debatable. called rapping. <laughs> it's, ca- it's, it's called referred rapping. referred to as mm-hmm. rapping. And it's, One might refer to it as such. And he's a good songwriter and he's a smart really talented yeah really as awesome a, guy. yeah musician yes great um i i just no, i i was looking forward to seeing that movie and now i'm not sure that i can it's right all. maybe you go to the bathroom during those parts any part where he's on the screen yeah. you go to the bathroom well i can't uh, he's not gonna be does he have his normal facial hair in that movie rap singing the whole time is he is he kelly he i, I kelly can't has speak every to song it. of his Lin it's Manuel, just the one right uh, it's just the one right is it just the one? Mary Poppins. I'm going to look at pictures, images. I think he was mostly clean no, shaven. No, he's he has yeah, he has like scuff scuff. Yeah. Um he's a cute fella. He is. He also looks up and to the right a lot in this movie. <laughs> Maybe that's his good side. I was watching Ariana Grande videos and that is a girl who does not enjoy looking directly into a camera. No, she likes to look out of the corner. Yeah. Because she likes her ponytail to show. She's like, oh, peek boop. Because I assume she thinks it makes her look taller. Oh, maybe. I think that's why she wore it really high, and I think that's why she wore cat ears. Because she wears also giant shoes. She's giant shoes. Very so small. small. Very, very small. Mm-hmm. Big pipes. Yeah. Big pipes. Did you see the body. video? Yes. It was good. I liked it. Yeah. I like that song. Yeah. I like the song. Um. So we've talked about almost everything <laughs> in the world. Uh-huh. Um... Any final thoughts on this book? Uh, overall, I liked it. Me too. I like this one. Yeah, I liked how much was going on. Mm-hmm. I, I was, I would get bored during the Pam. Me too. Mickey Clay apart. I got. I was really skimming bored. hard because honestly, as much as Reeve is a bitch, um, you love to hate her, yeah. and I would rather have just stuck with her. Yeah, she's like season two Cordelia. Yes, season one Cordelia maybe before she starts dating Xander. She's like season two ish because Early she's season al- two, you're yeah. also getting glimpses of her being nice. That's maybe. true. At the end for one page. She's like one into two. She has one thing that Cordelia does not, which is um fucked up lips. <laughs> <laughs> just mm-hmm. just sliced and diced. How long is it gonna take to heal? She's gonna have to not talk for a while, I think. She should, yeah. And stop putting lipstick on it. It will heal much faster because the mouth is one of the quickest healing areas in your body. In your face because it has to. Yeah, it has you to. You need it. Um, whereas like your foot. Oh, my goodness. Could take forever. Could take forever. You're stepping on it all the time. Mm-hmm. Ouch, ouch, ouch. Ouchie, ouchie. Um, next week, what are we reading? What were you going to say? Oh, you put well, your hand have, out like this. Oh, I was just going to say final thoughts from you. But you had said them. I enjoy it. I enjoyed the book. Yeah. I liked it. I read part of it in the bath. It was very calming. Oh. Um... We are taking a break next week. Yes. For the holiday. 
Yes, and there will be a um, like Forever Dog yes. Clips yeah. show, which is going to be really Look cool. Look out for that. Um, and then I'm so fucking grateful for my ex. Okay. Thank you. Next. Thank you. Next. Thank you. Oh shit! We are doing "Lights Out" by R.L. Stein. That's one of the oh. most famous covers. Yeah, it's a good one. It's a good cover. Really good cover. More Stein. More Stein. Um, I wonder if that one's gonna be good. Oh, I at the on the back of this. Uh, wow, my brain. His bio at the end of this book on my 1991 copy. Um, it lets us know that he is currently the head writer of the children's TV show Eureka's Castle, which is a thing I had forgotten. I didn't even know that. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Well, la dee da. I ran into the head writer of the TV show Adventures in Wonderland at Disneyland. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. That's cool. He was wearing a jacket and it said Adventures in Wonderland on the back. And so I tapped him on the shoulder and I said, did you work on that show? Because, of course, he worked on that show. And he said, yeah, I was the head writer for all 100 episodes. And I was like, what? That's awesome. It was cool. That's really cool. It was very nice. That's nice. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. So, lights out. Lights out. If you want to help our show, leave us a nice review on Apple Podcasts. Yeah. Seriously, guys, help our show. It It helps. It really, really, really helps. It makes a difference. You wouldn't think it would. And it's something that costs you no money to do. It's true. Um, Five stars. Little blurb. Yeah. Okay. Let's give them something they can say. And we can give you guys shout outs because we did this for public domain. It was fun. What Um, should they say? Five stars. Farm to table. Farm to table. Um, Farm to table. Table? Farm farm to to table. table, um, Avocado. Lip scab. Oh. Or avocado. Farm to table. Oh. Farm to table pocket jalapeno dip. Okay. (laughs) Farm to table pocket jalapeno dip. Yep. So if you say that, we'll give you a shout out next week or next time. Um, and, uh, for your, uh, for the like header or anything. put that for the header. Yeah. And then write whatever you want in the body. Yeah. Whichever one, as long as it yeah. appears somewhere. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then, uh, yeah. Farm to table. Farm Why to am I table. having, <laughs> Cause am I okay? <laughs> We're a little sleepy. I'm like, I think getting a Vietnamese accent. <laughs> Far- farm to table, uh, farm <laughs> to table pocket <laughs> avocado dip. Jalapeno dip. Oh. Uh-huh. I got uh-huh. in your head. I got in my head. Um, and you can follow our show on all the social media at Teen Creeps Pod. Yeah, and definitely do that so that you can see uh, the photo we post of Brett and Alec holding their holiday party gifts. Yeah. Which I will be posting tomorrow. Yay. Um, which is pretty special. It was pretty it's special. pretty special. Um, and if you want to support our show... Uh, you can um, support our Patreon, patreon.com slash teen creeps. We have a lot of really cool stuff on there. Um, and those of you who already support, um, we really appreciate it. Thank you guys mm-hmm. so much. Thanks for helping produce our show. And we Helping will... keep us alive, dude. Honestly, yes. Honestly, yes. Like seriously, Honestly, yes. we depend on that money. Not I to guilt you guys, die. but like we will literally, you will, you I and Lin-Manuel die. Miranda will be responsible for our deaths. Yeah. It's on you and yeah. on Alexander Hamilton. Fuck, that's going to be don't why would you sorry (laughs) um and uh yeah we'll get to voicemails yeah we're gonna start doing Um, voicemails again it's a little late tonight we'll do them next Um, time but yeah we will we will definitely be getting to a lot more of your voicemails yeah Um, we're so sorry that we haven't been able to do that scheduling with public domain theater and this has not permitted Mm -hmm. the time the time but we will um and uh happy holidays guys we really yeah, really appreciate you um to you and yours to you and yours you guys are a great community um we are so proud to call you guys our teen creeps community because you are so funny and smart and kind and supportive of each other and supportive of the show um and we appreciate that you would even want to listen yeah it's just so nice to know that you're out there yeah, yeah. it's really nice and um for those of you who you know, reach out to us. That's really nice. Thank you. Yeah. Um, we appreciate that. Have a wonderful holiday. And I, you know, we hope 2019 brings something a little better for all of us. <laughs> yeah. And um, we'll see you next time for Lights Out in two weeks. Mm-hmm. And keep it creepy. Forever <laughs> Dog. This has been a Forever Dog production. Executive produced by Dog. Kelly Nugent. 
Lindsay Katai, Brett Boehm, Joe Cilio, and Alex Ramsey. For more original podcasts, please visit foreverdogpodcasts.com and subscribe to our shows on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, 